So, to the fourth and final question for this week. Question four. Is the Freudian sense of the unconscious the same as that in cognitive or affective or social neuroscience? If not, how is it defined within neuropsychoanalysis? So the standard view would be that the cognitive, the, 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 the unconscious that cognitive or affect of any neuroscientist speak of um, is not the same thing as the Freudian unconscious. That's the standard view. Uh, both cognitive scientists and psychoanalysts will tell you that they're talking about different things when they talk about the unconscious. Um, cognitive scientists say the unconscious is simply automatized subliminal information processing. So it's all your cognitive gymnastics that you get up to, perceiving, thinking, um, deciding, uh, judging, etc. All of these cognitive operations um, going on without consciousness. Um, the, uh, the, there's nothing especially emotional or, or motivational or, or, or sexual or instinctual about it. It's just unconscious cognition. The Freudians say, no, the, the, uh, they've got another kind of unconscious, you know, which is this repressed unconscious, this dynamic unconscious, where you're withholding things from consciousness because you, you would be upset or overwhelmed um, to be aware of them. So you kind of protect yourself from this, um, from having to think these thoughts, um, which um, are so charged and, and uh, so unwelcome. So there are these two different kinds of unconscious um, in the cognitive neuroscience literature on the one hand and the psychoanalytical literature on the other. I don't agree, uh, though, that there are two different things, um, these two different definitions of the unconscious. The way I think it works is like this. When you've solved a problem, you know, the co consciousness is a very small place. You know, you, you are, we have a very limited capacity for holding things consciously in mind. And this has been measured, in fact. We can hold roughly seven or eight bits of information in mind consciously, consciously at any one point in time. Sort of juggling, you can juggle in consciousness in what we call working memory, seven or eight bits of information. So, you know, you, it's a limited resource. Think about all the information processing that's going on in your head all the time, not only in relation to current events, but in relation to everything you've learned in the past. There's a gigantic amount of information processing going on, of which seven or eight bits at any one point in time are conscious. So consciousness being such a limited resource is applied highly selectively. It's applied, in my view, only to those cognitions which require you to feel your way through them. In other words, to the salient cognitions, the ones that matter, where you don't know what they're, where there's uncertainty as to the answer and you need to have a qualitative, a valenced basis for making a decision one way or the other, as opposed to once you've solved the problem, you automatize it. Uh, for example, you move house, you need to find your way to work, you need to be very, very conscious about how do you get there. Uh, but the second and the third and the fourth and the fifth week, you know, you're no longer paying attention to how you get there. You just go there automatically. You just do it unconsciously. Um, so that's how in the cognitive view, that's how conscious cognitions become unconscious cognitions. They become automatized. They become subliminal uh, because they no longer need conscious attention. Now, what's left out of account in that picture is what do you do with problems that you can't solve? Uh, imagine uh, you, tr you think consciously about how do I get to work? Well, actually, that's a problem everyone can solve. But what about a problem like, you know, how do I make babies when I'm five years old? You know, how do you do that? You can't solve it. You can't solve it. You can't do it. Uh, it's just impossible. Um, in fact, all sorts of problems, especially in childhood, heartfelt problems, problems that really matter to the child. There's just no way they can solve it. I want to be big. I want to drive a car. I want to be like daddy, you know, but you can't, you can't do it. Sorry. So what do you keep on pondering? How am I going to do it? How am I going to do it? That would be a waste of this very limited resource of consciousness. So what I think we do is we render our solutions unconscious, even though they're not yet solutions. They're prematurely or illegitimately automatized. That is how, in my view, um, the, the Freudian unconscious, the repressed, uh, comes about. These are, these are premature, illegitimately automatized solutions to life's problems which we can't solve. Because we haven't solved them, they behave differently from 
the normally automatized cognitions. Normally, legitimately automatized cognitions are automatized precisely because they no longer require consciousness, because they're no longer problems. They're solved. These prematurely automatized ones, which is what I'm saying the repressed consists in, are not real solutions. They don't work. So you keep on banging into the fact that this doesn't really work um, uh, in, in, in the world. And this is why they give rise to feeling. Feelings are demands for mental work. Feelings are problems, unsolved problems. So this is what Freud called the, the, the threat of the return of the repressed. What's been repressed, in other words, what's been automatized illegitimately, constantly bangs on the door, wants to re-enter consciousness, and this is why they give rise to feeling. That is actually what feeling means. That's what feeling is. Feeling is a demand uh, for, for cognitive work that has not yet been performed, a solution that has not yet been found. So uh, that's both a standard answer and my own personal view on the matter of the difference between the cognitive neuroscience unconscious and the Freudian unconscious. I think they really are the same place. Thanks. See you next week. <laughs>